guys, welcome back to the Convenient Car Channel where things just aren't very convenient at all. So right now, I'm headed out, gonna go pick up Corbin from his house. His starter went out on his GLI, so I'm gonna be picking him up. We're gonna be going over to the local pick and pull, and we're gonna find a new starter for it, and then pretty much just see where the day goes. It's sunny outside, so I'll probably get some video action going on today. Maybe put in the rod bolts, do something, maybe paint my intake manifold. I don't really know yet, but um, let's see if we can get some decent content today, so. I'm actually in my 92 Subaru Legacy SS right now. If you guys haven't seen this car yet, Got a little, I think it's a V8, V9 STI wheel on it. I'll do a little walk around as soon as I get to Corbin's house and uh, you guys can see the outside. That's where our Corbin's place. That's the GLI right there. So we got my SS. I actually picked this up uh, like four months ago or so. I got it for 1200 bucks. Had no brakes at all. It's all bone stock besides the Forster seats, the STI wheel. And under the hood, it's got an 07 WX top mount with a TDO4 turbo, still running stock boost, but it's pretty clean. It was a Alaskan car, so it's got quite a bit of rust spots on it, but whatever. It's a daily. It's a good little car. Nice daily, too. <laughs> so we got our little handful of tools here. 13, 18, T8. That's all I need. You don't need a 17 at all? Nope. It's all 18 and 13. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna run over to pick and pull and then hopefully fix this fucking thing. Right here in pick and pull. This Miata's fucking collapsed. Oh shit, dude, it's rusting everywhere. Yeah, we gotta go find a 1.8T, pull the starter off of it, and it should be fucking all set. Alrighty, so we found this 2 Jetta. I guess the starters are the same. Probably because uh they're both four cylinder bow housings, so. And O2 J. Yeah. So let's get it. Alrighty, so we're back at Corman's house. We got the uh GLI here. If you guys didn't know, actually, you guys don't know. It's a uh, five speed swapped. The six speed decide the shit itself. This one holds a lot more boost, keeps in better RPMs. KO4 can hold it. More boost, more power. Oh, yeah. Yep. He already had the O2J, so he was just like, fuck it. Threw it in there. It only had 90k on it. Might as well. Yes, yeah, so we just gotta get the starter back in, then it should be good to go. All right, so Corbin got the new starter in. He tried to jump from power to the uh, switch on the solenoid, and it's still still not working. Don't really know why this why this is, but you can't jump it for some reason. Won't work with the key with the uh, the plug stuck in. Kind of stumped. Don't really know why. So we're gonna try to bump start it. Maybe something's fucked up with the flywheel where it's sitting right now. So we'll see if it'll start that way. And if he gets stuck down the hill, then I'm just gonna use my toe strap with the Subaru to bring him back up. So we'll see how this goes. All right, pushing you. Woo! Well, it works pop starting it. So I'm not really sure why his starter's not working. Doesn't really make a lot of sense, especially if we jump it from straight 12 volt power. Don't know why it's not working, but when you bump start it, it's mint, so. Yep, I have no idea. I think we're gonna go to my house now, uh, work on some VR stuff, maybe get some parts painted, maybe clean up some stuff. I don't know, maybe do the rod bolts. So the GLI just died, Corbin ran out, fucking attach the strap to it so I gotta tow his ass. The fucking strap snapped. So we gotta go push him. Alright, back on the road we go. Alrighty, so I started painting the intake manifold to match the color of my tube frame. The top side actually is looking pretty decent. You can see the sparkles in it a little bit. It still needs a little bit more, more work, some coats and clear. But I gotta get this underside as well. I don't know if you can see it, but I, I fucked it up pretty bad on the bottom side. So I'm gonna let it dry, sand it down, and then go over it again. So Corbin lifted up his car. He's trying to, or actually, he already finished it, but he had to tighten down his axle bolts. And then this fucking happened. 
the jack fucking lost pressure and totally cracked the GLI skirts. Just fucked. Totally fucked. So he's gonna try to use one of my Super Scissor Jacks and try to get it up and pull this jack out. So while well, the paint was drying on the intake manifold, I think it's sitting over there in the, the rocks. I decided to do a little bit of cleanup on the two frame, all the wiring and stuff. So I tried to tuck it as best as I could around all the tube frame. Up here, it's tucked behind, so you can't really see it. But you do see the zip ties everywhere. It's kind of ugly, but hey, whatever, it's the best I can do. And yeah, so most of it's out of the way. I mean, there's still a lot of stuff dangling, but once the engine's back in, the transmission's in and done, then it'll look a little bit better. So, you know, all the shit isn't fucking hanging everywhere. But yeah, I mean, I thought it came out pretty good. So here's a little view what it looks like with it just kind of tucked away and yeah once I get the fenders on the uh, headlights grill all that stuff it'll look a lot better all right guys so we got the motor flipped on the VR I got the oil pan taken off what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take some degreaser or just take a razor blade and clean up around all this edging so I can take off all the gunk that way when I put the new oil pan gasket on it'll sit really clean and nice to the surface. So doing ARP rod bolts are pretty easy. You basically just take off one bolt at a time. You can see them here on the rods. Boom, two, two on each of them. Just take one off at a time and then torque it in a sequence all the way up to, I think it is 60 foot pounds. I'll correct it on the video if it's different than that, but I think it's about 60. And then you just go around and do them all one at a time. So we got one of the first rod bolts out. I opened my package of the ARPs. I'll put the part number down in the description. I don't know if it says it on here. Actually, yeah, I think it's that 2046006 is the part number for these ARP rod bolts. That way you guys can directly just source them from here and then find them online for this car. So um, yeah, so we got the ARP just recently taken out of that. Put some of the assembly lube on it, the ultra torque, and then we're gonna take it it in there and get her down there tight and then we're gonna torque it to the specified torque specs so I'm not completely 100% sure about this a lot of people say it's 38 foot-pounds for the rod bolts if you have a stretch gauge other people say if you don't have a stretch gauge torque it to 45 some people torque it to 40 so I'm just gonna be safe and torque it to 45 foot-pounds Alrighty, so all of my ARP rod bolts are finished, torqued down to 45 foot-pounds on every single one. I know this isn't really that good of a tutorial video on how to do this, but then again, it was also really simple, and you just got to do it one by one, and then it should be flipping all set, so <sighs> on to the next thing. I just got to get the pan cleaned off, and then put my gasket on, make sure I have RTV every corner, and then oil pan goes on, and then it'll be construction for the rest of the engine.